Hey everyone, happy Monday. Um, I'm feeling like this video is going to be a little all over the place because I'm trying to keep it short so that I can upload it to my uh, YouTube account and it not take forever. Um, but a couple of you actually reached out to me and asked me to do some additional videos. Um, so I am happy to do so. Uh, so hopefully this is helpful. Um, just kind of reviewing uh, some information from chapter 10. A uh, couple key things here is um, the differentiation between um, the way in which folks evaluate uh, classroom management and behavior. So um, behavioral approach or the behaviorist approach is really looking at uh, more of an applied behavior analysis uh, background. So evaluating the behavior. So remember, we talked a little bit about applied or um, a, uh, uh, antecedent behavior consequence. That is absolutely more behavioralism um, and behavioristic terms. Um, so an ecological approach or an environmental approach really focuses, instead of focusing specifically on the behavior, they focus on the environment. Um, so again, I think that there are two, th I think that both of these things um, merge and meld um, when you evaluate behavior. Uh, but again, I do think that that's an important distinction to make. Couple other key points from the chapter. Um, for students who qualify for an emotional disturbance, um, you really are going to be considering students who have ongoing um, problem behavior or uh, behavioral concerns. Uh, this is not a student that, you know, all of a sudden has a behavior um, and then, you know, a week later it goes away. Um, that's not the situation that we're looking for. Um, again, these are students that, um, you know, without similar intervention, um, you know, or without in simple interventions are, are going to continue to persist. So, Again, putting in place a little simple strategy, um, you know, wouldn't be sufficient. A student would not qualify for an IEP under the category of emotionally disturbed um, if those small interventions um, would be applicable. So <clears throat> the best way to kind of think through that is um, I did post the website of pbis.org uh, um, as an extra credit assignment. Um, and on that website, it's really nice because it actually has tier one, tier two, and tier three interventions. Um, so if the behavior is easily remedied by one of those tier one interventions, uh, the student would not qualify. Um, so that's kind of, uh, hopefully that helps explain some things to you. Um, another uh, key po uh, focus of the chapter that we talked or that we um, is important to remember is uh, really looking at um, the information related to assessment and in classroom assessment um, and how that's completed. Um, certainly there are observational teams that complete uh, assessments. Oftentimes, for example, in my district, I do complete an observation. Sometimes my behavior coaches complete observations. Um, but the reality is, is that um, the person who sees the student the most is, is, uh, is the classroom teacher. Um, so they would be the first and primary source for that type of information. Um, and they're kind of going to be the one who is going to take the lead on providing that information. Now, that's not to say that a classroom teacher can uh, make a diagnosis of, of a student with an emotional disturbance. Um, but again, they are going to be a primary source of information. Oftentimes in our district, um, what we do is whenever we're looking at behavioral assessments, our first point of contact is the teacher. Um, and we will kind of work through the teacher and say, okay, what types of behaviors are you seeing in the classroom? So that does kind of give us some point, um, you know, like a little bit of a streamline or a focus in terms of, OK, this is what we should be looking for. Um, I don't know if that was helpful at all. Um, I know that I was totally rambling, um, but hopefully it is and maybe it is. Um, I think the biggest thing, guys, is just continue to give me your feedback. We're both going through this COVID um class delivery, instructional delivery model together. Um, and don't be afraid to advocate for, for what you need to be successful in the class. Um, you know, I hope that I you feel like I'm pretty receptive to your feedback. I've been asking for it. Um, so you're not going to hurt my feelings um, if you give me the feedback of what you need. Um, I'm here to make you successful. Um, and I do really want uh, the course to be applicable. And there, cue the dog shaking, of course. Um, so uh, in any case, uh, we will. I will see everyone on Thursday. I'm going to post the link here in a little bit. Um, 
actually a lot of it because it's super early in the morning, um, hence my rambling. Uh, but if you, um, I'll post it later this afternoon and we'll go from there. Uh, hopefully you have a good week. And if you need anything, don't, don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks. Bye.